Let's get moving using the XR Interaction Toolkit in Continuous Movement. A few things have changed from the previous tutorials, so you should definitely pay attention to this one. Booting back into the scene, you'll see nothing's really changed here, but there's a few things I want to go over and change from the previous tutorial. The first thing I'll mention is I did turn off hand tracking on my Oculus Quest. I noticed it was draining my battery a lot, so if you're not using that for your game, I would advise you do the same. And since I've turned that off, for my XR Origin, I'm also just going to turn off the XR hand that we did in the previous tutorial. The last thing I'm going to change is I'm going to go over to my controllers here. And if you remember from the previous tutorial, I changed this to the controller. Instead, I want it to go back to our left and right hand that we had before. And you'll see we have two same named ones here, but one's just going to be a model. The other one is going to have the animator and all the controllers, and that's the one we want. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to select the one that had all the animations and controllers, and then do the same for the right hand. All right, and now we're ready to get moving. The first thing we'll need is a locomotion system. And this is what's going to be responsible for coordinating between our locomotion or moving our XR origin and all the move providers. And that's how they've structured this. So to do that, I'm going to click this. I'm going to add an empty child. I'm going to name it locomotion system. With that in place, I'm going to add component locomotion system. And then it's asking for the XR origin. As simple as that, there we go. Now, we can't move with just that. We need providers. So as I said before, this coordinates with move providers, and then this determines what has control over the XR origin. So the first thing we'll want to add is a continuous move provider. To add that, I'm just gonna right click this, create empty, and I'm going to name this move. And then I'm going to look up continuous move provider and you're looking for the action base. Now you'll see here we have some fun things to fill out. So first is the locomotion system. I'll drag that here. Next, we can enable strafe. So that is being able to move left and right diagonally, but also forward. <laughs> we can enable fly, which is actually pretty cool. You can uh, just kind of look around and fly around. Use gravity is there and then it has two modes for gravity application. So it's either attempting to move. So say you were climbing a ladder and let go. Until you move, you won't apply gravity. So I find immediately to be more realistic. The forward source, this is going to determine what is our forward source, how it says, oh, you're going to move forward in this direction when you press the thumbstick. And so I find the main camera to make the most sense for that. Next, we have our left hand move action and right hand move action. So you want to, in my opinion, pick one or the other. You don't necessarily want both your thumbsticks to be able to move you. And I find that the left hand seems to have become the default when it comes to VR games. And so to do that, we're just going to look up move, left hand locomotion. Now again, you could do this for the right hand. You would just add this here if you want it to be right hand based. There we go. And we could select that there. Previously, let me open this up really quick. You'll see here for our locomotions and inputs, they actually used to not have anything for the right hand. They just just assumed that you would use it for the left hand, but now they filled it out. So you don't have to stress about that anymore, which is nice. Again, I said I don't really like the right hand as the move for the continuous move provider. So I'm just going to mark this off. And if we boot it up the scene, you can see I can move with my left hand. And based on where I'm looking and pressing forward, it moves in that direction. So there you go. Now, I will say at this stage, the gravity will not work. If I walked off the cliff, it didn't work because we do need a character controller. And I'm going to add that a little later towards the end of the video. But for now, I want to continue on and talk about the dynamic move provider. So the dynamic move provider is just a different form of continuous move provider. And how it works is you could actually do some interesting things with this. Essentially what this bad boy does is it allows you to determine what you want as a preference for each hand. You'll see down here, it has a left hand move direction and a right hand move direction. And so we could have one be set to the head relative. So like the continuous move provider, but then we could have the other one be hand relative. So based on the right hand's orientation, that's what forward would be. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I don't know what you would use it for, but here it is. And this is how you set it up. So again, a locomotion system, you could put it here, forward source, we want it to be the main camera, and then you would add your references. Head transform, again, would be the main camera. And then you want the left and right controller. And let's see, yeah, I'll have the left hand be the head relative, and then I'll have the right hand be hand relative. And let's boot up and see what we got.
And one thing I should do before I boot it up is just make sure I turn this off so it's not fighting between the two scripts. But right, let me start it up. Now you can see that when I start to move with my left thumbstick, I move in the direction of my headset. But when I use my right thumbstick and press forward, it moves in the direction of where my right hand's pointed. And yeah, that's how that works. Now, my personal preference is just to use the continuous move provider, so I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate the dynamic move provider, and I'm just gonna go with the continuous move provider. Next up, we need to learn how to turn. So to do that, we can do a continuous turn provider or a snap turn provider. To add that in, I'm just gonna right click here and I'm gonna add an empty object and I'm gonna call it turn. Starting off, I'm gonna go with the continuous move provider. And then we are just going to drag in the locomotion system here. Oh. My bad, that made the continuous move provider. So I did that before. Yeah, just make sure you don't do that. It's very easy to do. All right, there we go. All right, and then next we need to add in the turn. And I found that if you're moving with the left hand, you want to turn with the right hand and vice versa. If we were moving with our right hand, it makes a little more sense to turn with the left hand. So since I am moving with the left hand, I am gonna go ahead and look up turn here and you want the right hand turn. And so now if we boot up the scene, you'll see that I'm able to turn to my right and my left. Coming back to the editor, if you thought that was turning a little too slow, you can change the turn speed here. And then one word of caution when using the continuous move provider, it has been known to cause motion sickness. So the snap turn provider might make your game a little more accessible to others. So I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that and I'm going to add a or snap turn provider. Again, we add our locomotion system here. You can change the turn amount here. This debounce time just kind of allows for a little wait time between each snap turn, so it just doesn't happen in quick succession. We also have a turnaround one right here, and that just allows for a 180. So if your player pulled all the way back on the thumbstick, that would allow them to do a 180 turn. And then if we were doing the reference, again, since I'm using the left controller, I want the right snap turn here. And this actually does have its own input. And so instead of just turn, you use the right hand locomotion snap turn. And just like that, when I hit the right or left, I'm able to snap turn right and left, just like that, boom. So we are now able to turn and move. Are we done? No. So the problem is we are able to run through this table and also gravity is not working. And that's because we don't have a character controller. So the character controller is going to add a boundary for us so we don't run into things or through things. And then it will also allow us to apply gravity to something. So to add that, it's as easy as going to the XR origin. Then we're gonna add component, character controller. And you'll see here we have a few attributes we can play with. Starting off, we have the slope limit. So this, if we were going up a slanted hill, would determine how steep of a slope we can go up. Now, one big one that we should change right here is probably the radius. So as you can see here in the scene, it's a pretty chunky boy right there. And so to reduce that, I'm going to change this radius to maybe 0.2. And feel free to experiment and see what feels right in your game here. And so if we were able to start up the scene now, we should be able to run into this table. But before we do that, we should probably also raise this character controller a little higher. And I mean, you could do that by raising your XR origin, but I don't think that's too wise. I think it's a little better to move the center here. And so what that'll do is if we did not move that up, we would just fall through the ground. Now, as you can see that I am running forward I am running into this table and not going through it. But there is a bit of a problem again. So when I go to stand up and move, you'll see the character controller is not moving with it. So let's fix that. Now, luckily for us, we used to have to code this in ourselves in the previous tutorial, but Unity has added something for us, and it is the character controller driver. So I'm just going to add that. And it's gonna ask for a locomotion provider. And this is gonna be based off of what your move provider is. So I'm just gonna drag that here. And you'll remember I'm using the continuous move provider instead of the dynamic move provider. So if you were using the dynamic move provider, it would just get rid of this one, just use one or the other, honestly. And then it is asking what our min and max height is. So that would determine the min and max height of our character controller. So let's start up the scene and see what we're working with now. So now when I move my head mounted display, I, it goes up, it goes down, left, right. It doesn't matter where I move. This will now track and follow. 
So that takes care of a major issue for us. And yeah, that is it. That's continuous movement and turning. That'll do it. Oh. If you found this tutorial moving, consider liking and subscribing. And to my Patreon subscribers, I really can't do this without you. Thank you so much. Hey, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.